All right, it's time for the annual tradition, the Arena Biathlon, the World Team Challenge in Schalke, Germany. As you can see, we are just starting here. It looks like we got about 10 teams, two teams from Germany. Uh, the rest of the teams are from various nations. No Sweden, no Italy this year, but the returning champions, the returning team of Julia Simone and uh, Fabian Cloud are there. And as you can see, Simone is taking the lead and starting uh, pretty quickly here. It was a pretty awesome event. Every uh, year that the trimester breaks after the first trimester over the holiday break, they have this arena biathlon where, as you can see, they are literally skiing through a an, an arena where they have other you know sports matches such as soccer, football. Uh, it sounds like they have even had some concerts in this arena. So it's really cool to see that they truck in all the snow, they bring in some targets, and they have a, uh, a biathlon race inside. Now, the sketchy thing with these types of events is that Look at this right here, this sharp turn. This arena does not, it's not IBU regulation trails here. There's gonna be lots of twisting and turning. It's gonna be hard to pass. Um, so really this whole race comes down to the shooting range, but that's okay, because it's just an exhibition event. So as you can see here, we got Kebinger, Hetich Veltz, we got uh, Lisa Teresa Hauser, Ingrid Landmark Tandervold. I know that Marketa Davidova is in this race. So a lot of the biggest names in our sport are competing here in this expo event, um, but it's all for fun. Now, this was the sketchy turn last year. It looks like they added some distance here in the run out on this downhill. Last year, they were just going straight downhill into a hard turn. So really cool to see that uh, they've lengthened this out a little bit, just, you know, for safety, but still looks pretty sketchy out there. Not a single uh, flake of snow outside of the course. So uh, as you can tell, this is all man-made snow and, and the man-made snow can get kind of icy and um, a little glazed over on top, especially if it's below freezing. But uh, as you can see, they're entering back into the stadium. Oh, not yet. Doing a little extra loop out on the course. But, oh, and then we got the traffic jams. And this is exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> this is uh, this is what happens when you don't have a regulation-wide ski trail. It's it's really just, you know, you get this accordion effect where people run into each other and uh, then the, the field spreads out again. So this is going to be a team sprint. So we got guys and girls going. Obviously, the girls are taking the start. Here we go, entering back into the stadium. Look at this full house. And every year, it seems like they have more and more sponsors for this event. So that's good. But uh, yeah, so the, the girls are going to go. I have absolutely no idea what the rules are. They could be using spare rounds. They probably are. Whatever they can do to avoid the penalty loop. And then uh, who knows if they're tagging right away or if they're going to go ski another lap. We will find out in just a minute as they are entering the shooting range for the first time. Man, this is so cool. They got the Christmas trees up in the stands behind the shooting range. And look at this. They just put the shooting range right in the middle. And you got people up to the upper deck, up into the nosebleeds. But here we go, Julia Simone. She is quick to strike with a first hit. Kevinger cannot stay uh, with her with a miss. And Simone is out of there clean with no spares. Can anyone match her? Uh, it looks like Kevinger has a miss. So no spares. They're going straight to the penalty loop. Hetich Valt is clean. Tandervold is clean. And Klemenchic is clean from Slovenia. Uh, Baserga is also clean from Switzerland. So uh, this is uh, this is going to be a tight battle here. It's As you can tell, I mean, it's only been three minutes and they're already done with the first shooting stage. So it's going to be really uh, fast turnover here. And the defending champions hand over in first after the first shooting. So we'll see if they can maintain their lead. Now, uh, Tandervold is going to tag off to Sterla Holm Lagride, who uh, last we heard he was disqualified. Uh, from participating in the last race of the new year or the last race of the first trimester so again this is not an ibu event so they can kind of do whatever they want here but uh you know laggard had that safety issue back at the hotel in lenzerhide cool to see him back on the starting line for this event and i assume that he'll be back on the starting line uh for the most uh for the new season once it starts up and then we got lota Lai, and i believe that was terry langer um, could be the other cloud for Belgium. Go check out my latest video. I just came out with a new video all about sort of the history of uh, Michael Roach, who was a German star. And then after he was cut from the German team, he switched nationalities to race for Belgium. And in his pursuit of trying to get back to the Olympics, he actually ended up really 
um, bolstering up the Belgian biathlon nation into the nation that we know it today. They have a full roster of World Cup and IBU Cup and junior athletes. They just opened up a new venue in Belgium, and that all came from Michael Roche just really trying to get back to the Olympics uh, after his, his early success in his career. So go check out that video. I'll leave a link down below. All right, here we go. Going into shooting at number two, you got Fabian Cloud coming in. He's currently ranked 20th overall in the World Cup, and uh, he's got uh, he's got a lot of talent. Let's see if he can he can uh, keep the uh, team of him and himself and Simone in, in the in the lead here. Three for three, four for four. And boom, five for five for Fabian Cloud. So easy as that. He, the French have not missed a shot yet, which is uh, pretty awesome. Looks like Fabian Cloud this year, it, his shooting percentage is a little bit down from last year, um, shooting close to 80%, where last year he was like close to 81%. Um, so he's due for a couple misses. Yakov Fat clean with no penalties there. That is a big turnaround from, oh, what was it, the relay in Hockfeldson maybe, where he had eight misses. Uh, it out of eight shots in the relay because you get the three spares. So uh, I don't know what was happening there, but that was that's about as war as bad as it can go in biathlon when you have uh, five penalties in a relay. It's not good. So Fack is going to tag off in second place to Clemenchit. So look at the podium right now. We got France, Slovenia, and Stalder and Baserga, the Swiss, in third place, followed closely by the hometown favorites Kevinger and Dole. So this is uh, actually this is actually going to be a good event for Switzerland. This is a highly uh, high shooter event because like we saw earlier with that accordion effect, a lot of the best athletes who are good on the ski trails aren't going to be able to make a move out there because there's just no room to pass anyone. So I see the good shooters and the fast shooters doing well out here uh, today. Staller being one of our better shooters on the World Cup. I think he was like 93% shooting last year and quick as well. So he's ha he's a huge advantage for the Swiss team. Baserga is more average, uh, but you know if if they can if she can hit her targets and Staller can really come to life on the range, I could see the Swiss having a really good race here today. Back out on course, Julia Simone. I think she's currently ranked sixth overall after trimester one. Uh, that is obviously a little bit down from last year where she was absolutely dominant and won the overall. Uh, don't need to talk too much about all the drama that's gone on uh, outside of biathlon over the summer, uh, the, the level of stress that that has probably caused. Uh, but it's her teammate, Justine Breza Boucher, who is the current overall leader. And it's really cool to see, you know, French uh, female biathletes are just so strong right now with Lou Jean Manot. Uh, and then they just have a a ton of uh, other females who who can compete and then also on the IBU Cup level a ton of really good French females so uh, the the female team for the French is really strong right now being led by uh, Julia Simone and Justine Breza Boucher so uh, really cool to see how well that's going for them let's just hope that the guys can step up because I mean uh, we had Quentin Filmaé, who had such a good season the other a uh, couple years ago in the Olympics, and he was the superstar of the Olympics. But ever since then, it's just gone downhill for the French. Uh, we haven't seen Jacques Alain really step up. I think Cloud is better than 20th overall, so hopefully we can see them uh, really step up and, and, and be a powerhouse that can compete with the Norwegians. Here we go back into the range for shooting number three, and we're into the stand now. And this is where Simone is not a strong split shot there, was a hit, prone ring, and prone ring. Wow, so easy as that. The French have gone 15 for 15 so far, and now it's becoming less of a battle between the others. But how long can you keep this going? Because when you keep hitting shot after shot, the pressure builds. Uh, because you know you're just on this crazy streak of hits. But look for Baserga to answer here. She's a pretty good shooter. I think she's better than Kevinger and Klemencic. Oh, but Baserga has the miss. Klemencic also has the miss. And Kevinger is the one who is clean. That's going to excite the home fans. Look at her go. And that that's going to be a little bit of a gap now from third place. Can Tannervold or Hauser stay in the fight here? We got Yulia Zima from Ukraine as well. And, oh, Hauser already has a miss. She, you know, shooting always used to be Hauser's strong suit. And it seems like in the last couple of years, she's been having a few issues on closing the door when it really matters. Tannervold is clean. Zima is clean. And we can see uh, these two coming out of the penalty loop, fighting for third place. And here comes Tannervold. So here we go. We got a tight race here for third and there goes Baserga tagging off to Stalder and Clemenges back to Fack. 
And then here comes Ligrid, who's on the chase. So don't, I, I would not be surprised if Ligrid is with uh, Fak and Stalder by the time they come into the shooting range. Uh, but yeah, still, we got the French way out in front, opening up a huge lead, and they have yet to miss a shot. So let's see if they can go the full race and go 40 for 40, because I, I assume both teammates are going to be shooting four mags worth of bullets. So that's going to be 40 shots. Right now, they're 15 for 15. All right, as we watch Benny Dole come back into the stadium here, look at this long tunnel. This is pretty sweet. Uh, I like this shot. Uh, this is actually really interesting. What stadium just has a tunnel like this? It doesn't look like there's any, you know, doors or anything on the side there. It's just a direct state. It's a direct tunnel from the outside into the stadium. Kind of interesting. But uh, as we have Fabian Cloud on the shooting range here for standing. Now, Cloud has slowly but surely been increasing in the overall standings. Last year, he finished 10th overall, currently sitting in 20th. And there's the first and second miss for the French. The door is now open. Can Benny Dahl... Uh-oh. Oh, look at that face. Julius Simon's like, hey, I did my part. And uh, Fabian, what the heck, man? You can't keep up with me. <laughs> but, all right, the door is open it does not look like this is a standard penalty loop I'm, I'm guessing 75 meters or so where normally on the biathlon world cup it's 150 so it's not a full like 25 second time penalty for a miss it looks like it's going to be pretty quick through that penalty loop dull has to shoot clean oh there's a split he got lucky there that's a prone ring hit and another prone ring hit so cloud is probably leaving the uh, penalty loop right now as we speak as the contenders are in the shooting range. Stalder, oh man, I thought he was gonna bring the Swiss back into it, but he has a miss there. Don't worry, everyone else has also missed, including Lagride. So France, still in front. But as you can see, Benny Dole has closed the door a little bit. Here comes Hannah Kebinger. Can she keep the pressure on Julius Simone? So far, Simone has not missed a shot. And we know for a fact that Julius Simone is good in head-to-head -head races. Go check out my video that I just came out with a couple of weeks ago about Julius Simone's season last year and how uh, it really we really dove into the analytics behind her performance last year. And we saw that it was head-to-head -head races such as the pursuit and the, uh, and the mass starts where she was just absolutely unbeatable on the range. She loved to just play and, and have that head-to-head -head competitiveness against the others and that's really where she won it because she didn't do all that great in the sprints and the individuals but she did so absurdly well uh in the in the head-to-head -head races so go check out that video again link down below but uh, here we go it looks like we are about halfway through the race because both uh men and female male and female have shot twice so this is great getting the reaction from Julius Simon. She's watching those two misses from Cloud. So there you go. After about half the race, we got France, Germany's back in it, and Ukraine out of nowhere with Zima and Padrushny in third place. So as we see Henna Kebinger here on the chase, uh, Kebinger is kind of interesting. I kind of expected her to be a little bit stronger this year. Uh, she had some good results last year, finishing 25th overall, but she only raced eight of the 20 races. This year, she's only raced uh, two out of 21 races, and she's currently ranked 59th. Um, so that's a little surprising. My guess is she had uh, maybe the COVID or some illness or something that prevented her from participating. Um, Kebinger, only 26 years old. Now, here's a really interesting thing about her. Her shooting, well, she's only done two races this year, so it's hard to say, uh, but her shooting is not super strong. I, she's about an 80% shooter, whereas Simone is, is over 90%. So we definitely have uh, Simone with the advantage here, but Kevinger so far on the World Cup circuit has not missed a shot in the standing out of her two races that she's done. And again, she's done an individual and a sprint. So she's had three standing stages as Julia Simone has a miss uh, in the prone. That's her first miss. So um, hopefully Kebinger, if she can hit all these targets, we're going to have another... Yes. Okay. So Kevinger, there goes the crowd. I love it. Kevinger is clean. We're going to have not a new leader because as you can see, Simone is already around the turn there, but Germany is just that much closer to hauling or reeling in the French. 
Basurga, Clemencic, Tandervold, can anyone answer and keep this race uh, tight towards the front of the group? Because there's always, for the whole race so far, there's been a really big group fighting for third place, but I want to see a big group fighting for first. And we see the different strategies here where uh, Simone actually took her pull off to tag Cloud and uh, Hed or Kebinger just went for it. But here's Hetic Veltz that we are watching here. She is, oh, misses the last shot. That's a bummer. But we got one German team fighting for the podium here, and that's going to keep the home crowd happy. And, oh, man, here comes Buserga with two misses. Where is everyone else? There's Zima, and there is Klemencic. Wow, who had uh, Ukraine and Slovenia fighting for the podium here? Man, can Norway, can you guys just get back into the fight? Actually, you know what? Norway has all the fun all the time. I, I love to see the, the smaller nations stay ahead of Norway. That's a little biased of me. <laughs> As we see out on the track, Benny Dole is furiously trying to catch Fabian Cloud. Now, Dole's shooting percentage this season is a little bit down. Last year, he was an 85% shooter, which is just about standard, just about average. Remember, on the World Cup, the average shooting percentage is 83%, and Dole being 85 gave him a little bit of an advantage there, but where he really had his advantage was on the trails. He is such a fast skier, despite his absolutely atrocious technique yes i've said it he is not the most technically beautiful skier out there but man does he make it work he must have a giant engine as we see him furiously trying to catch cloud here but this season uh despite his successes he actually is shooting way worse than he was last year he's currently posting 85 sorry 80 percent shooting where last year again he was 85 percent so he's down five percent on his shooting this year that's that's like almost a guaranteed miss more during four stage races such as individuals and pursuits and mass starts um, and and potentially an extra miss in sprints and we know that in a sprint especially one miss can be a huge difference between you know first and even out of the flower ceremony at this at this point with how strong the whole field is but uh, Benny Dole this year again super strong skier one of the stronger skiers on the world cup and uh, currently sitting, I think, in like sixth place, no, eighth place overall after finishing fourth last year. He was the only person that could break up the uh, that Norwegian dominance at the top of the field. So let's see as Benny Dole comes into prone. We got lap six out of nine, and he is going to be quick to try to put some pressure on Cloud. A little bit more experienced than Cloud, so hopefully he can uh, take that little bit of an advantage and get the Germans back into pole position. Cloud is being quick with it and nice with it, and Cloud is clean. Benny, can you answer? Oh! Oh my gosh. I, you could hear the collective sigh of disappointment throughout the entire stadium, and Cloud is going to take this opportunity to just try to pull away and give Julius Simone a huge advantage again, and we see way back there in the distance, Benny Dole going around the penalty loop, and there goes Simone. So it looks like, again, the French are going to be in the lead, but, uh, you know, I ah, I was going to say, if uh, if Dole took the lead there, I still think the French had the advantage because I, I still think both their athletes are a little bit stronger than these two uh, Germans here. But they've already clawed them back once. They've already made that uh, that comeback once. There's no there's nothing that says they can't do it again. So uh, I, I didn't even see what was going on uh, elsewhere in the <laughs> in the race we got roman reese here uh who has starts off with a miss clemencic in fact are still in the in the podium position but they are a ways back and they've actually put some separation on the ukrainians where the heck did the ukrainians go because here comes lagride and tandervold they're taking off and there are the ukrainians so here we go we've had a good race for third all race but i want to see a good race for first i want to see if uh, one of these teams can can get back with the leaders here so for our slovenians here we got fak who's currently ranked 33rd overall and klementic who is currently ranked uh, 57th in the world after trimester one uh, so it's really cool to see that these two combined are beating norway first of all but also just in the mix here because uh, i think they're really overperforming and unfortunately i think it's just a matter of time till one of them uh, messes up and we see them drop down the order so doing nothing but cheering for them right now um but it's really cool and you know keep your eye out for the slovenian women specifically they have a really strong crew of junior uh young senior athletes who are you know being led by this senior uh Klemencic 
And then also when, with the addition of Anna Maria Lampich, uh, they are sneakily and steadily becoming a, a, a team with a lot of potential as we see Simone just absolutely murder the targets and put the pressure on uh, Kebinger to try to stay with her. Um, but yeah, take a, take a look at the Slovenian women. I think in maybe two years when the Olympics roll around, there is potential there that they could be a dominant women's team and you know compete with the likes of Germany, potentially France and Sweden. Uh, all right, so here we go. Kebinger with a clean shooting. So she keeps she keeps pace with uh, Simone. So it's going to come down to Cloud and Dole. Uh, we're going to have to do some uh, some statistical research here to see who's got the advantage in that last standing shooting. There goes Clementich with two misses. And if Tanderville goes clean here, then we're going to see a more normal podium with France and Germany 1-2. And here comes Tandervold. Now, remember, it's not that big a penalty loop, so if Klemencic can get through and Tannerville has one miss here, they might stay on the podium. There it is. There's the clean shooting from Tannerville. It's always a timely... Clean, shooting clean is always a good time, you know, and it's always a good time to shoot clean. One, it's amazing how a good shooting stage can really set your uh, your race up for success here. So there's your top three um, with a challenger for fourth and also Zima looks like she shot clean. That's going to be a fight for fourth and third as well. So we got uh, we got the French and the Germans uh, with only a couple laps left. Uh, it looks like two laps left, one shooting stage left. And we're going to have to do some quick statistical analysis to see who's got the advantage here. All right, so I did just quickly look up to see what is going on on the range this season. And Fabian Cloud, currently in the standing shooting, he is shooting 80%, which is below standard, below average, but... He does have the advantage over Benny Dole from Germany, who is currently shooting below 70%. Did I? I got to double check that. Okay, below 80%, but above 70%. So he's shooting closer to 75%. So if the statistics are right, then Fabian Cloud has the advantage here. And we might see back-to-back -back World Team Challenge champions, the team of Simone and Cloud. But look at Benny Dole here. He's fighting so furiously to try to make that not the case you know that he's got the whole stadium oh, i just love this shot look at this got the range right in the middle of the stadium and all the fans and the seats that's so cool uh, but anyway he's got the advantage uh on on the on the ski speed but fabian claude has the advantage on the range as we enter into the final shooting nothing but calm cool collected from cloud you know he's due for at least one miss there's a hit. There it is. There's the miss. He leaves the door open. Can he clean the rest? Yes, he can. So he's got one penalty and then a lap to ski. Dull has to shoot clean here, and he has to shoot clean here fast. As, as you can see, he's not even in the range yet, and the penalty loop is much shorter than the normal biathlon race. And there goes Cloud. He's going around the loop. He's making the turn here. I think Cloud is going to be in the clear because he's already – pretty much through the penalty loop and bull hasn't even hasn't even started shooting yet but he's got to be quick oh there's a miss now he leaves the door open for the challengers from the back but as you can see no one else has entered the range yet there's two okay as we see oh and one of the better shooters on the world cup sterla home is entering the range so it's going to be a tight battle for lagride he actually now has the opportunity here to sneak into second place if he can clean here quick and fast we got all eyes on Lagride. There's a hit. There's a miss, and I think Dole's going to be safe. I don't think Pedrushini or Fack are going to be able to take him out. But if Lagride has another miss here, he might lose the podium. Ooh, I don't think either of these guys, even if they clean, there's a miss from Pedrushini. Fack is the last one who can uh, – and there's a miss. So there we go. That is probably going to be your podium. Uh, we got Simone and Cloud from France are going to win this one with Dole and Kebinger in second place. And then third place from Norway, it's going to be Lagride and Tandervold. But this is uh, this turned out to be an awesome event. I mean, look at it was cool to see some of these smaller nations. I really thought Switzerland was going to do better. I mean, where the heck did they go? Stalder with two misses on the range right now. But uh, this is just an awesome event. And again, there's no IBU points or anything associated with this event. It has nothing to do with the IBU. But it's just cool that biathlon is so big in Germany that they have to have a biathlon event during the break. You know, I mean, think about these athletes. They, they just raced the whole trimester. Then they got the big three coming up with Oberhof, Rupolding, and Antholz after the break. 
and they're out here just doing biathlon <laughs> in front of uh, millions of fans probably on TV watching this in Germany. So um, it, it's really just crazy to see how big biathlon is in Germany. And um, I oh, just, just love that shot with the stadium and everything. So we got the couple French fans uh, in the crowd here amongst the sea of Germans as uh, Fabian Cloud comes around doing his victory lap through the zigzaggy stadium, one lap through the range, around the penalty loop, and then through the finish line. Man, this is just so cool. It'd be so cool to see an event like this in like Boston or New York or um, I don't know, wherever else biathlon and cross-country skiing are big in the U.S., maybe Minnesota. But, uh, oh, man, and we got a team getting lapped. That's that's unfortunate. But... Uh, <laughs> And here we go. Fabian Cloud from France and Julia Simone. They defend their title from last season. Can anyone beat them in Arena Biathlon? So far, the answer is no. But here come the local favorites, Benny Dole and Hannah Kevinger. They put up a really good fight, but unfortunately, they came up maybe two misses too much. And But hey, on the podium, I think from last year, I don't recall, but I don't think the Germans were even on the podium last year. So it's cool to see that they're there, keeping the home the home crowd happy. And then finally, Legride and Tandervold from uh, Norway. And they, hey, honestly, Legride and Tandervold, that would be a good single mixed relay team at uh, World Champs for Norway. So um, kind of interesting they came in third here. But honestly, apparently so, Cloud and Simone, they got good chemistry. They can do well in the uh, single mixed format. So there you go. That's Arena Biathlon for you. Uh, until next year, <laughs> we'll see ya.